lab, the toolbox now has a tab called functions. There are two blocks. This one defines a new function. And this one calls a function. Let's make a function that updates the number of likes on the screen and plays a sound. We'll call it twice, once in each on event block. Drag a define a function block out. Notice how on both of these on event blocks have the same last two commands in them. To help simplify this program, let's take these commands and turn them into a function. And let's give the function a name like update screen. Now we can remove the repeated code from the rest of the program. Now click run. Hey, we defined a function, but nothing happened. The reason is we forgot step two. We need to call the function. To call a function, drag out the call a function block from the toolbox and put it in the program. Now add in the name of the function we just defined. Now that we have both defined and called our function, the code will actually run and the likes will change on the screen. Check it out. It works. Notice that if I also call the function before its definition, it still works. Defining a function simply gives a name to a block of code, but it doesn't actually run it. The definition can be anywhere in your program. This means that your code can get messy and really hard to read. So we typically put our function definitions at the end of our programs to help keep things organized. You can also see why it's important to give your function a meaningful and descriptive name. If you call it something like do stuff, it'll be unclear what the function is supposed to do, and it makes it hard to use in your own code. Giving a function a meaningful name makes it much easier to understand what it does. Using functions like this in your program not only makes your code easier to understand it, it also makes it easier to fix problems or errors. When you fix a problem inside your function, that will automatically fix that problem wherever the function is called.